It's the Tommy Pennington Group. Countdown to kickoff homecoming 2017 is tonight. The Dragons entertain Louisville here at Dragon Stadium. Time for the player interviews. Let's start on the offensive side of the football as we do each week. And we're going to start in the Dragon backfield today. We talked to TJ McDaniel last week. We're going to talk to his partner in crime this week, Tavian Gould. And really, in the way this running game has been going, you guys have gotten off to a good start this year. And let's talk a little bit about that, about your, your role as a running back and you've made it up through Double Dipper to where you are now. And tell us a little bit about that journey and what it's been like for you. Well, I've always been working to like improve myself athletically because I've never been the fastest or the biggest guy. So I've always been focused on working the hardest, you know. When I showed up here in the beginning, uh, I was really excited because moving from Arizona to Texas, the Texas athletes are usually a lot better. So I wanted to prove myself and show that I can come out and uh, stick with these guys, even though they've been focused on football their entire lives. It's been really serious for them. I wanted to show that I could compete with them as well. How big of a challenge was that? When I got here at first, uh, I showed up during the summer workouts and I was taken aback by everybody was so fast. I couldn't tell who the starters were because everybody just seemed so athletic. I, and I, and uh, it was a big change from where I came from. You grew up in Arizona. You played tons of sports. There's never a winter time, so I guess you're playing all year long, right? Talk about the things that you played and, and why you enjoyed which particular ones. Growing up when I was really young, I played football, soccer, baseball, and I did some track as well. And then as I got older, I stopped playing soccer pretty early just because I didn't, I didn't enjoy it that much. And then baseball, I stopped playing when I was nine after winning the state championship. I just decided for some reason I didn't want to play. And I spent most of my time after that just playing football and basketball. And then coming up through middle school, I was playing basketball for a while, but uh, my middle school had basketball and track in the same season. I decided I wanted to do track instead of basketball. So I've pretty much been doing football and track up to now. Did you not also dabble in gymnastics as well? Oh, yeah. I did some gymnastics. Uh, I didn't compete or anything. I just like went and like did like the training and everything, and that was really fun. It really improved myself athletically as well. It helped with other sports and like, helped my flexibility and strength. Talk about the differences between your old home and your new home. Which do you prefer and why? Um, I do miss miss it back in Phoenix. I lived in a town called Ahwatukee, and uh, I miss it mostly just because I grew up like around there, and like I was close with a lot of friends who like lived around my neighborhood. And uh, one of the main differences between like South Lake is a city, and but the town I grew up in was bigger than the city of South Lake itself, and that was. And then also, I went to school in Chandler, which is basically like it's basically considered Phoenix. I had, like, friends all around, like, the area, but, like, here in South Lake, like, pretty much everyone's focused all in one area just in South Lake. A lot more outdoor stuff in Arizona. Uh, tell me about this trail you used to run. It's a, a two-mile steep mountain that really tests a lot of people. Do you remember that? Yes. The trainer who showed it to us, uh, he nicknamed it the Neil Thrill Hill because uh, his last name was Neil, and that was uh, what he used to train his son, who ended up going to play at U of A. And uh, basically, it's uh, it's right by a park. It's a mountain. Like, there's not many mountains around Texas, so it's hard to describe, like, what I'm sure people have seen, like, mountains, though. But, like, it's not, like, a huge mountain, but it's, like, big enough. It's small enough where you could run to the top and if you're sprinting in about 30 seconds. But uh, I would run about halfway up, run around, run all the way to the top, and the backside was steeper than the front side. So that was the hard part. Then I would come down, come back up, come down again, and then run all the way around and finish off. And that's what I did when I was, like, in middle school to get me into shape and, like, get ready for uh, high school. Now, when you played youth football there, you were in a no-weight-limit league that had a lot of Tongans and Samoans, like what we saw last week with Trinity. Uh, what was that like? Yeah, my team had a lot of Polynesians on it, and uh, it was really fun, you know, because, like, once a year we would have hold a luau after one of our practices, and, you know, it was, it was fun being part of that culture. And, like, all those guys are, like, great guys. You know, they're all really friendly, and they're always happy. And you know how to do the haka. You've done that before with them, right? Yeah, we would do the haka before every game. We want to do it before and after, like, Trinity. And it was, Trinity's probably looks a little more intimidating than ours, but we did the best we could with our little kid voices. You've done a lot of football camp since you were a kid all over the country. Do you remember some of those and what you got out of them? Uh, one camp I used to go to yearly during the summer was called offense-defense camp, and it was a full bad camp. And you'd practice three times a day. It was it, it was only for a week, but it was it was really tiring and taxing. But it was a lot of fun because 
we'd go to a co- it was held at different colleges around the country. We'd usually go somewhere in California. We we like we like to go to San Diego a lot and also one in LA. And uh we'd stay in dorms over there and uh you would practice all day and then eat pizza at night and then you'd wake up and do it again. Let's talk about the classroom. I heard about your ACT scores fairly high. You take academics very seriously, it appears. Yeah, I'm, I really want to do well in academics because academics opens up a lot of doors, especially if you play football as well for college. College, I, I've noticed recently that colleges have been uh, contacting me based over just academics, so that shows like how many doors that can open on its own. What's your favorite classes? Uh, my favorite class has always been history. And uh, actually, right now, I'm taking anatomy. I've, I think that's pretty interesting. Is there a possibility in college you might want to study medicine? Yes, uh, that's actually what I want to go on to study. Uh, I've always been interested in learning about the human body. And, like, it might be because, like, I, I'm involved with athletics a lot. So I enjoy learning about, like, how the body works and how to make it work the, uh, the best that it can. You're in the middle as far as the Ghoul kids. You've got an older sister in college, a younger sister. It's a 10th grader here at Carroll in the Carroll Color Garden with the band. Uh, what's that like being the one in the middle of two girls? Uh, pros, cons? Uh, pros, I've always had my own room growing up, and they've had to share a few times. Uh, cons, sometimes they gang up on me if, if we have a disagreement because they seem to always flock together. And uh, I've always enjoyed having them around. Uh, we're pretty close. Uh, I'm only three years younger than my older sister and two years older than my younger sister. So we've, all, we, we've always been pretty close. And my sister's been off to college for the past four years, but we still love it when she comes back and visits and we get to spend some family time together. Let's talk about some places you've been, a little travel. Hawaii is a place that you like. What about a trip to Paris, too? Yes, uh, we go to Hawaii pretty often. Usually, We tr- usually try to go once a year just because it's a favorite spot to go to. And But uh, this last spring break, we tried to switch it up a little bit, get some variety. So we went to Paris. I think part of that was because I'm taking French, so they thought maybe I could get around better. But honestly, my French wasn't strong enough to <laughs> handle the native speakers. But it was fine because most people there speak English anyway. And it was really enjoyable. We pretty much just spent every day just walking around, visiting different museums. And uh, we'd leave in the morning, and we wouldn't come back till late at night. All right, get you out here on this, going back to the fact that you grew up in Arizona. The phrase we've always heard, it's 115, but it's a dry heat. It might be a dry heat, but it's it's a lot of heat, so... Don't let them fool you back there. It's really hot. In the summertime, no one's outside pretty much. But it's only really hot in the summer. The rest of the year, it's super nice. It's like 80, 90 all the time. But when it hits summer, then don't go outside. It's too hot. Thanks for the time and the visit. Good luck tonight, and uh, good luck the rest of the season. Thank you very much. That is Tavian Gold running back for the Carroll Dragons. We'll have more coming up on Cat Down to Kickoff. It's brought to you by the Tommy Pittington Group. Tommy Pittington at Briggs Freeman Sotheby International Realty. He's the realtor to call in Southlake anytime you're thinking of buying or selling. The real estate mogul in Southlake is Tommy Pittington. A timeout here. We'll have more when we continue. Dragon football is driven by Park Place dealerships.